Hi everyone, uh, in this video we're going to discuss the marginal rate of technical substitution. So it's a key concept in the theory of the firm, in particular when regards to uh, production and the relationship between our inputs, which uh, in this case are labor and capital. So by definition, the marginal rate of technical substitution okay, shows the rate at which labor can be substituted for capital while holding output constant along an isoplan. And mathematically, okay, it's the negative, it's the negative of the slope, okay, of an isoquant. And it shows the rate at which L can be substituted for K. And we denote that as our marginal rate of technical substitution, that's M R T S L K. That's equal to negative, okay, slope of the isoquant, again, that's dl. So the negative of the slope, so the slope is dk over dl along a constant isoquant, q0, okay? And we know that that's the negative of the slope of the isoquant we tackled in the last video, that's negative mpl over mpk, okay? Therefore, mrts, lk, is equal to MPL over MPK. Okay. And uh, you know that MRTSLK will be positive since we know that MPL is greater than zero and uh, MPK is greater than zero. Therefore, MRTSLK is also greater than zero. Okay. Now, in addition, K, okay, when the isoquant is strictly convex, so like an indifference curve, an isoquant is also strictly convex, then along an isoquant, okay, the marginal rate of technical substitution is diminishing for increasing inputs of labor. And uh, there's a derivation for that which involves the total differential, so let's uh, get to it. Okay? Uh, to show... Okay, that strictly convex isoquants imply a diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution as L increases along the isoquant. We need to show okay, that the derivative of MRTSLK with respect to the uh, with respect to labor as L increases, so that's this derivative here. Okay, so let me just clear it up. So that's this derivative here, right? It should be less than zero. So that should be diminishing, right? So how do we start with our proof? So we want to see the change in MRTSLK. And that's just uh, from the previously, we know that MRTSLK is equal to your marginal product of labor divided by your marginal product of capital. So we denote that for simplicity as FLN FK. Then uh, to get the derivative of FL over FK, we take the total differential and it looks something like this. So we expand it using quotient rule and you get the form here. So that's FK times FL LDL plus FK DK minus FL FK LDL plus FK K DK. So this is an application of the quotient rule. Then what we do is we divide everything here. We divide both sides by DL. Okay, so we now have... This one over dl, so we get dmrtslk divided by dl, and we can see that some of the things here, so we have we have a dl over dl here, so that's just equal to 1, that's why it cancelled out here. Okay, then we have dk over dl minus fl times fkl, again dl over dl is here, but that cancels out, that's equal to 1. Then dk over dl over fk squared. Now, dk over dl here, Along the isoquant, okay, we know that that's the slope of the isoquant, which is equal to negative FL over FK. And we know that this, uh, FLK and FK, is equal to FKL. So those are second-order cross-partial derivatives. Those are also equal by Young's theorem. So if we do that, we can solve for the form here. Okay, so we can solve for this one. And we have this uh, form here. Now... Since the isoquant is strictly convex, it implies that okay, the production function that we have is strictly quasi-concave. Okay? 
And if it if a production function is strictly quasi-concave, it should be that this form here okay, is greater than zero. But notice this form here looks very similar to this form here. It's not the same, okay, but it looks similar. But we know that this part of the form is the, the highest in value and even if we subtract this one and this one from that, okay, the difference is still greater than zero. And we see that this is positive and, and this is positive, but this main form here, which is the start, that's negative. So uh, the positives cannot outweigh the negative. So this entire thing on top okay, is negative. And we're going to be left with a negative divided by a positive because we know that the marginal product of uh, capital is greater than zero by assumption. Therefore, we know that this derivative dmrtslk divided by uh, dl or the change in marginal rate of technical su substitution as labor is changed or increased in this case is less than zero, which suggests that there is diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution. And what that means is as L increases along an isoquant, okay, MRTS LK diminishes. So we can see that in this mini graph here. So notice at a low value of K, okay, the slope used to be here, okay, and it's this much. When I increase L to L prime, okay, the slope became flatter, it diminished. And we know that uh, the MRTS LK, that's just the negative of the slope. And if we increase it further, it further diminishes here. So that's the concept of diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution.